Hello, uh, welcome everyone to another episode of the Cosmic Matrix podcast. Today, once again, with your hosts Bernhard Gunther and Laura Matsu. The topic of this podcast is synchronicity, intuition, and divine guidance. So, this is also very important to consider, especially in the times we're in right now. And, you know, basically, we dive deep on this topic, actually, in way more depth and with way more practical exercises and practices around it all in our upcoming group coaching program, Embodied Soul Awakening, which starts November 22nd until February 12th. It's a 12-week program uh, by application only. And um, yeah, we're almost full. So Go to my website, veilofreality.com, to check out the course and apply there. Or you can go straight to awakenapply.com and send out your application. Um, yeah, so our course is really, again, uh, uh, based on the idea that we really need to embody the work on all levels based on the fourfold approach of holistic self-work, working on the physical emotional, psychological, and spiritual level all together, the inner work in context of the outer work, meaning also understanding the cosmic forces we are up against, the matrix forces, not only in the 3D level, which most people focus on, but also in the 4D hyperdimensional matrix, uh, the occult matrix, which all esoteric traditions have talked about as well. And also, you know, combining the necessary psychological work with the spiritual work. So not either or, but both together. That's the great work. And that really also ties into, you know, synchronicities, intuition and divine guidance, because what we really want to dive into this talk here is that it's sometimes easier said than done <laughs> to trust our intuition. We can mistake all kinds of impressions and feelings for intuition. So we're going to give you some uh, pointers, a little, you know, summary of what we dive into way more depth than into the course. But I think, um, yeah, let's start first maybe with the idea of synchronicity and, and where the coin first came from. Yeah, I just want to preface it too um, that we have not figured out all the answers to this. I don't think anyone can, but we're just going to share what our experiences of synchronicity, intuition, of divine guidance has been just so that we can kind of get the conversation rolling. But I just want people to keep uh, open-minded that this is our experience, you know? We don't have all the answers about this. I'm not fully psychic, thank God, personally. Um, so we're just talking about it because during these times, I think a lot of people are looking for that guidance and they are looking for some sort of signal from the divine, what they need to do what needs to happen next. Um, so we're going to unpack that because I know a lot of people are kind of at turning points in their lives right now, needing to make a decision, you know, and we just want to talk about this kind of nuanced process of following your intuition, following synchronicities. Because what I see in this age of, I guess, spiritual materialism that we live in, um, is that this concept has been not only hijacked by both the regular egoic identities of people, but their own spiritual ego. Um, but it's really just m misunderstood, you know, is that not every single person has a good relationship with intuition. I think it happens in people in varying degrees. I could even say that there's certain astrological signs that have tendencies to be more psychic, more intuitive, you know, so we're each we're each set up in a different way. However, there is like a still small voice, which which is within us, which is the voice of intuition, um, or a higher self or whatever you want to call it, you know, that we need to literally learn our teach ourselves to follow because a lot of for the most part, a lot of us are actually following conditioning patterns the super ego, like the inner tyrant in our head telling us what we should do or should not do. And intuition is almost entirely ignored, if not, not just ignored, but ridiculed as non-essential information. 
in mainstream education. So first thing we need to actually do, and I see this with a lot of people, is undo programming that we have around intuition and then also not fall to the other extreme where automatically we're just like, I'm just going to follow my intuition and develop this like almost overconfidence in our intuition because our intuition um, can actually often be many other things that's not intuition. So we're going to talk about that and unpack that. But, you know, there's distinction. So what we're going to divide into categories as well is that there's intuition. There's a gut feeling, which is also related to instinct. And there's also strong emotions. And these all can coexist in the same experience, but they're separate things. Yeah. So excellent uh, introduction. And uh, yeah, before we dive in deep into that, I saw one of you mentioned at the beginning uh, with the spiritual materialism this day and age, and we know what that means. We've mentioned it before, but can we define it again for listeners who are not familiar with the term spiritual materialism? Okay, I'll just have to give my own definition because I don't <laughs> have one off the bat, but it's basically, you know, not in, like engaging in spiritual practice. Well, I mean, it can have many dimensions of it, first of all. But what I think is spiritual materialism on a basic uh, on a basic level is people who are not really engaging with the spiritual path with any amount of depth. They're just more, it, it's their ego has hijacked the spiritual journey and it's become another identity for them to put on, Right. you know? And, and they're not really doing the deep gritty soul work, but it's more like, okay, like now I'm an intuitive energy healer and just check out <laughs> me on Instagram. And like, you know, I, I have all these amazing crystals and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, I mean, it's on overdrive these days. And I think in many ways, you know, we also have to check ourselves because like, you know, we, there's a lot of us who engage with spirituality because we either think we're going to get something about it or we're going to get a certain type of relationship or going to be a certain type of person. You know, our our sincerity is not on track with what the spiritual path is, which is about uniting with the divine for the sake of itself, surrendering to divine will, all of that. Yeah, right. So yeah. a lot of people just do it because they want to become better, happier, manifest their twin flame, manifest riches, whatever. All of that is how spiritual materialism plays out, you know, and we all engage it with it, I think, to varying degrees. We just have to check ourselves. Yeah. That, so it also ties into like mistaking to work on the personality rather than truly wanting to wake up. Right. Which also yeah. ties into like, as you, the many misconceptions around intuition, divine guidance or whatever, or psychic abilities, but a lot of people can overestimate themselves or mistake all kinds of things for what they are not. Yes. And also, you know, I've mentioned that again, uh, you know, uh, the term awakening is very much abused in, in nowadays and, and completely overused. You know, people claim to be awake just because they see through the 3D matrix of whatever the, the, the agenda of the new world order. Right. And as mentioned before, that cannot even be in heaven. People say then we've been, they've been red pilled and all of that. Yeah. On a very superficial information level. No, but it's not. It's you, externalized. Exactly. That's what yeah. I mean. You cannot even have, you cannot even call it having taken the red pill from a deeper esoteric uh, perspective in light of the great work. Right? Yeah. I in the think... true awakening process, which by the way, I also like, we never, we, I would never claim to be fully awake in the true meaning of the word. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah, right? exactly. So that's, that's, it's also, it's, it's, it's a preface, so to speak. Yeah. But go and ahead. just to add on to that, I think the distinction is, is like waking up to the li lies in the world is easy. That's important to individuate, right? But it's about waking up to the lies you tell yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is not easy because we're so used to hiding from ourselves and so used to kind of pushing these lies in the corner or justifying them or rationalizing them, which is the most popular thing. <clears throat> in fact, you could even use intuition and your experience of intuition, which could be intuition and could be mixed in with all sorts of projections as um, you can lie to yourself through thinking, oh, I'm just following my intuition. And it's actually just you following your own self-deception. Exactly. So it's so tricky. But let me just start out with the, I want to just divide the, the, the categories of what yeah. is not intuition before we start. Yeah, before we get in, but I want to just also add on what you said before, the, the, the definition of spiritual materialism, because it is important to point out. It also relates to like almost a Gemini way of just superficially taking in information. No, no, no offense, depth. No yeah. offense against any Geminis. It's just a... <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, skimming the surface. The, the skimming the surface so, type of just collecting information, jumping from one thing to the other, and this ADD kind of, which we see approach even nowadays on TikTok or Twitter or be it Instagram or any social media where, you know, spiritual insights become just memes. And that's great to, you know, I don't want to throw the baby with the bathwater. You actually, my wife's an actually meme maker. 
and and they can be very inspirational but people get stuck on this level mm -hmm. and don't dive any deeper Mm -hmm, right. mm -hmm. it, it's it, it's basically a consumptive way of engaging with spirituality like what's the next big thing what's the next cool mm -hmm. thing who's the next teacher who's more advanced how can i right. you know it's it, it, it's just more and more and more so it's it, it's based on consumption basically um okay so let yeah. me just talk about the differences because it's really important to just set the baseline so just speaking of intuition which we're going to dive into first is that there's intuition right and then there's instincts and that's related to gut feelings and then there is our strong emotions so those are three separate things and mm -hmm. they can actually all overlap so intuition i'm like is let me get into that one last actually okay so strong emotion can be linked to intuition but for most people i have actually realized that a lot of people are not really in tune with their emotions to begin with. So in order to actually distinguish whether it's intuition or strong emotion, first we actually have to develop a good relationship with your emotional body and be able to be present and identify what emotions are rising up for you, right? So if it's a strong emotion and then you're having it about, about a circumstance in your life, it's not to say that there might not be intuitive information there, but it's important to unpack the strong emotion because a strong emotion is most often related to you know, past experiences, childhood triggers, you know, trauma, shadow. all sorts of shadow material, like, you know, that needs to be unpacked and analyzed because intuition has nothing to do with strong emotions. It's more soft and subtle. In fact, I notice that the more calm and present and neutral I am, the more I pick up intuitive information, the more emotional I am, the less likely I am to be very intuitive. So it is really important to divide the two because I, I and I think we talked about this earlier, but there's a term like uh, we sh you, you shared earlier was like, you know, my in I, I, I just feel intuitively, people say, you know, I feel intuitively. First of all, feeling something intuitively are two separate things. Yeah. And so it's important to unpack those two because I have had experiences where I had a very strong emotion about something and I swore it was my intuition and I was wrong and it didn't mean that the whole intuitive feeling was wrong but it means that my strong emotions were clouding myself to the point where I could no longer see reality clearly yeah I think the key point to understand also in my experience and I also learned the hard way that most people mistake intuition for all kinds of impressions and feelings which are not intuition. Yeah. And in my experience, intuition is not a feeling at all. It transcends any of the five senses, you know, uh, any any emotional. Uh, so for me, it's already a red flag if if people say, I intuitively feel, and they people use it, like you mentioned, very loosely, you know, even about information nowadays. Oh, I intuitively feel that this and this is going to happen, or this, or this information is true, you know, as if they can trust it fully. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm, again, I'm not taking myself out of the equation. I did the same, right? That ties also. I wanted to just not get into it right now, but ties also into the concept of resonating with something or not. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the the saying which a lot of people say. You know, oh, take what resonates and leave the rest. Yeah. <laughs> you know, regarding information or teaching, and whatnot, and there's truth in that, right? I even wrote I wrote an article about that, but. You know, the question is, what is it resonating with? So as you mentioned, there's a lot of work to be done to uncover true, to come to the point of true intuition and, and true resonance because people can easily, and again, I'm, I can make, take myself as an example, I used to resonate with lies, mistaking it for truth. Mm -hmm. right? Like you give Why? me an example? Oh, back in my, in my, when I took the New Age pill for a few years, getting into the whole UFO um, stuff, mm -hmm. um, especially uh, certain figureheads, which now clearly spread disinformation. I don't want to get into it right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, or the, the aliens are here to save us, Galactic Federation of Light and all of this and all kinds of channel material like, oh, that resonates with you, must be true. Why? Because I mistake information that makes me feel good and appeal to my wishful thinking, appeal to my bias mm -hmm. as resonating. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. So yeah. The key point for res to for on a basic level, like you can literally resonate with uh, with uh, lies and throw away the truth. Yeah. So that's also needs to be very that can be very easily misapplied. 
Uh, yeah. That's and, and resonating is like, okay, what is it resonating with? Are you carrying all these lies within yourself that it's resonating with? You exactly. know, like it's such a loose term. Okay. So then we talked about, um, we talked about strong emotion and let's talk about gut feelings because that's different. Yeah. Um, so there's a distinction. So a gut feeling is like danger or not danger. This is the somatic intelligence that we're trying to kind of awaken through somatic work, actually. So we want to be like a jaguar in nature where we'll be able to detect danger in our environment before it comes. That's this instinctual wisdom, yeah. right? A lot of people do not even have that, too, by the way, because as long as you're... Out. Yeah, in a free state or checked out or disassociated, that instinctual wisdom turns off. So the embodiment piece and healing trauma, understanding your nervous system is huge to understanding instinctual wisdom. Because I think instinctual wisdom is a really important intelligence to have right now, especially with all these people moving and freaking out, you know. So instincts and intuition are different. So instincts is like danger or not danger. I'm an animal. Do I sense that I'm safe in this environment or not? You know, like if you're a woman and you're in a club and there's like a guy staring you down, instinct is what tells you, okay, is this guy creepy or not creepy? So that's an important thing to actually have because it's our instinctual wisdom which will tell us something's off here. And so that protects us. The instinctual wisdom is like our own inner protector. So it's important to have that too. And then intuition, I think, is more, um, it, can cut, it can give us like a myriad of pieces of information. Like depending on how intuitive you are, you just pick up more information in a situation than the average person. So for example, if you and I are present, um, we're at a checkout line at a grocery store and the woman is talking about her bad day at work or whatever, you know, you might just hear like one one person who's present there, if you, you and I were both there, I'm just using this example, you might just hear, okay, she's suffering, she's going through a really hard time, you know, I can hear the sadness in her voice. That's one layer of information, Right. And then another layer of information, once you become more intuitive, you can literally pick up like she's sad because she's going into relationship problems and you can get all this information that she didn't even say in that moment. And that's what I feel is intuition. It's it's extra information that, and it just becomes more and more, um, you just pick up more and more information as you become more intuitive over time. But it's important to also reality test those impressions and not just take it on face value so if you say to that woman oh like is it because of relationship issues you know and then she says no then you know your intuition was wrong you know but a lot of people tend to just blindly trust their intuition and then they run off with it i want to say on on that note when people say oh my intuition was wrong no that was it it, your intuition wasn't wrong it was not your intuition because the intuition never wrong right so on that note for me it's like it's an instant knowing and it's not emotional, but when the thought comes in, yeah, right, and overthink, then then it gets already distorted and diluted. And I think it's never black and white. I can see it in myself. I have a certain in, in, in intuitive insight right away, boom, mm-hmm. about anything really. Mm-hmm. But that it can easily get clouded with my own pro- unconscious projections, triggers, yeah, un- my own unconscious stuff. You know, it can get diluted easily. That's why it's important to test and not just, you know. Uh, because it takes, you know, even if you if you study esoteric traditions and spirituality, especially Sri Aurobindo's yoga, like here the, to access the intuitive mind, it takes a high degree of high level of being. I know to really work through a lot of your stuff to yeah. clear through all your your traumas, your wounds, your your shadow aspect, your your desires, your wishful thinking, your unconscious bias, and all of that to access clear intuition. It's easier said than done. Yes, right? and it, I think it actually does take a pre prerequisite of at least it's been in my experience is like when I'm in my head and I'm in a mental thought process because we're really talking about the higher mind here right that's the intuitive faculties is the higher levels of inspiration yeah Um, but when I'm in my lower mind my thinking logical rational mind it's very hard for me to pick up intuitive messages. In fact, it tends to come more when I'm in a place of stillness or even imagination, creativity, you know. Um, and so that's the, that's the thing to understand. So we have, I'm just going to talk about that a little bit. So, you know, basically convention, the conventional education system focuses on the lower mind, intellect, reason, collecting data, 
And through intentional psycho spiritual work, we're trying to activate our connection to the higher mind, which basically is connecting to the world of soul and spirit, which connects us to these universal and collective archetypes and themes. And that's what we're trying to read intuitively. At least that's how I understand it, you know? So I think for, for the, for a lot of people, if you're identified with an ego personality, let's like, then it's very hard to be intuitive. I feel it's actually spirit infused, soulful people, which tend to have more of that connection because it is it is a soulful experience. It's not emotional. Yeah. It's soulful. That's one. And, and by the way, it's also like for people like that's again, Laura was just actually reading some notes from our uh, body soul awakening course. So we're going way, way deeper into all of that with more also pretty truly practical exercises to uncover our psychic gifts and intuition based on this interrelationship between imagination, inspiration, and intuition. Which is Rudolf Steiner's concept. Yeah, so what that reminded me of, also wanted to mention regarding intuition, that it is fully objective in a sense. So there is, it's not clouded by likes or dislikes mm -hmm, or any triggers. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just this, this detached objective view, right, of what as it is. Yeah. Right? It reminds me of a quote by the mother, Sri Aurobindo's partner, said, as long as you have any likes or dislikes, you cannot fully trust your intuition and senses. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, likes and dislikes are also based on projections, uh, projections and triggers and all of that. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, like... Shadow material. Uh, doesn't mean that, not to be mistaken with, with like, you know, whatever, making decisions, your preferences, but if there's a strong like or dislike, yeah. you cannot be objective, you cannot be fully accessing your intuition, you yeah. have a bias already. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so I'm going to actually share the story about when we met or when we first started talking, because I had a few intuitive signs around then. Okay. So is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, because there was, this is a really good example about how you can get intuitive information and it can also be clouded with your projections. So when we first, or before we even started talking, so for people who are new or haven't heard this story before we actually met on facebook Ta -ta. Um, and i <laughs> was googling sex demons actually <laughs> and i found your website because i actually had a succubus this is a crazy meeting story but i had a succubus who was actually an a aspect of my own disowned past who was haunting my dreams and it was terrifying so i was googling like sex demons and then i found your website and i remember now there is something when I was looking at your website, I saw your name and it was literally like your name was surrounded in like glowing energy. There was something that drew me towards your name. And then I added you on Facebook. And then intuitively, I just had I did have this knowing like it was just like, OK, like it took you a while to actually accept my friend request. But I knew once you accepted my friend request that eventually you would message me. I just intuitively knew it. Right. But I did have projections towards you at the same time because mm -hmm. I had projections. I mean, basically, anytime you have these really strong romantic feelings in the beginning, it doesn't mean they're a bad thing, but it means that there's projections present. And I had some of those, um, which was hard for me to see you clearly. But there was intuitive guidance. Like, I just knew that you were going to message me one day. I saw your name. It lit up for me, you know. Um, but there wasn't this kind of desperation because I wasn't but if I would have bought into all of my projections I had towards you in the beginning it would have been like getting together really fast it probably wouldn't have been too fast for us to actually it would probably have been too fast for the, for us to have a mature relationship um but who knows uh and but so basically what I'm trying to say is that I had projections and I also had an intuitive feeling that you and I had an important relationship. So it was intermixed. But since my projections were so strong, I was wise enough in that moment because I have, I've had a lot of history of following romantic projections and having it not turn out okay. I was able to step back and not enter into the relationship right away until I could really just reality test it, like just talk to you, get to know you, develop a friendship, you know? Yeah. And I think that's really key because I think a lot of people actually enter into relationships and they're like, oh, I just intuitively feel drawn to this person. 
And they may not even understand the nature of their own projections and how their own unhealed childhood dynamics tend to fuel those projections. So I, so I think it's really important to actually get wise before you even get into intuition on the nature of perception, of projection, of shadow material. And then it goes even deeper than that. But that's just the basics. Yeah. Because in that moment... If I would have just engaged, like, so I had the intuitive feeling and I have the, I had the projections, but if I would have engaged with my projections of towards you and entered into the relationship from the projection point of view, it could have actually damaged the relationship because I wasn't getting to know you as a person and I wasn't yeah. able to see you and get to know you for who you truly were. Yeah. That, where was that? That's a good summary of, of how most... <laughs> relationships work at the beginning unconsciously yeah. right on the, and on the high, i want to mention this we're going to go that deeper into the second hour on the more higher level not high level what do i say on the more intense level you know cold level that ties also into eve logan's work the dark side of cubit and an off bite which i've written about which i've been through like just years before I, we met so i was way more cautious because the whole love by uh, Dark Side of Cupid is all of these emotional projections on steroids with all kinds of artificial synchronicities to make it seem it's meant to be. So we'll talk about this later in the second hour, mm -hmm. so tying this into, mm -hmm. into, into artificial synchronicities um, that appeal more to the lower nature or the ego or the wishful thinking and, and are not divine synchronicities, but are influenced by occult forces. But I remember that because Speaking of it, because I was I was extreme. You you notice that when we first connected. I mean, um, I was drawn to you as well, but I've also learned the hard way from the past. So I was like so reluctant to do anything, and I don't. I'm not the, reluctant the, to do to message you or anything to contact yeah, you yeah, right at first yeah. because I, that's I you know don't do this on Facebook anyway. And like you know, knowing what I've uh, uh, you know the le hard lessons I had to go through from the past, so I was very just relationship damaged of just like very insecure i don't want to like do anything but there was a strong intuition like i couldn't override it mm -hmm. right so like no i need to like i just want to like uh, make make well, the friendship first get to know her who is this person so the right? intuition was just telling you contact her contact her yeah. exactly yeah. but also like this was different because i did not have like in the past in other um, uh, um situations these overly romantic projections yeah you know, i noticed like there's an attraction right yeah. but it was like not this overly, you know, what a lot of people then mistake for love, these romantic, like high and like butterflies in the stomach and, mm -hmm. and cannot sleep, you know, thinking of the person all the time. I didn't have that. So mm -hmm. that actually like helped me, kept, kept me grounded in a way. That's right? good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. So there's a certain amount of maturity. Also, I'm sorry not yeah. to interrupt because I have done a lot of work after these intense experiences of my relationships which I wrote about on, on already on my website. You know, it forced me because this is a whole other story of the dark side of Cupid. People then tend to blame their parent, uh, their, their their partner or entities, which they miss the point because it brings up all your stuff, your childhood stuff, your shadow, your trauma, your wounds, which you need to confront. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of work since and before we met to really integrate it, to face all of that within myself. Yeah, yeah. So the more you have done this inner work and become individuated, actually, the less the romantic projections. Gurdjieff said something like, uh, interestingly uh, in the like of, you know, a true meeting of souls of, of other person, there's actually no almost no projection, right? The more projections there are, the more the emotional highs and yeah. romance, the more amount of projections are involved and you're not actually seeing the other person as he or she is. Yeah, right? yeah. But going back, I think we should go back to the on the topic of, of intuition in that sense. So uh, going yeah. back, like I had also this intuitive sense, but it made clear mm -hmm. I was had enough self-awareness to be clear, like is it any fueled by any sort of romantic projections. Yeah, and I think especially in the realm of relationships and intuitions, we get in, 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 in the context of relationships that we're either interested in or already in or or, or whatnot is, is super, super important to comb through your intuitive feelings with a fine tooth comb with your romantic projections, what you know of your own shadow material, because I think that that's probably where most often people go wrong is like they have... Do not underestimate as well our own psychological capacity to think that we're feeling something intuitively. And it's just a mixture of our own projections, because honestly, 
When the inner child is not loved for a long enough time, it turns crazy, desperate, and delusional to try and create that love. And that's what I think happens to people is like they have this intuitive feeling or feel drawn to someone, you know? So what part of you is being drawn to them? And and, and, and is it coming from a place of intuition? Because I think you and I, I think it was a smart move that we did because we did intuitively feel drawn to each other, but we took a step back. And even myself, because I went to India for three months after we first started talking, is I actually had to observe my own projections towards you who I had not I had not even met you yet either so I knew their projections um kind of play out before my eyes and I watched I observed them and the way that it happened was I was trying to make you into a bunch of different men in my past and that's how you know the projections are there because I used to meet people and I'd be like oh they remind me of like this person from my past guaranteed when you say that kind of stuff there's projections yeah. taking place so Basically, you know, what we're trying to say is it really is un important to understand the nature of perception and projection and how we overlay that onto reality in order to understand intuition, yeah. because that is a very strong driving force. Um, and so basically the first step of accessing this this higher realm, you know, is first getting in touch with the subtle energies of life. You know, people say things and yet on the undertone, there's an energetic wave that accompanies our speech and our being. So you want to start picking up on that subtext. And in order to do that, you actually have to be able to focus and be present. Another prerequisite for intuition is like be present in and the moment. And be in your body. Yeah, be present in the moment and be in your body, you know? Yeah, um, not in so, your head. So mm. basically, we first we start to experience this intuitive realm as like inner images and archetypes, you know? So they're just stuff that's beyond the five senses. So I can be around someone and I can be like, wow, he has a very like king kind of archetype to him. We start to sense these like, hidden archetypes that are actually the spiritual dimensions of things. Um, and I think it's really important to just generate that soul quality so that we're not interfacing with material reality as it is, but we're interfacing with the hidden spiritual dimensions of things. Cause I think that's a, that's a step to intuition is if you just interact with things on face value, then that you're just going to be stuck in the 3d level. Um, and so you know, and then and then from there we develop this quality of inspiration. Because if you tune into like I, I've experienced this myself actually, and I've noticed this when I come out of meditation retreats, is I get so sensitive to information coming from the environment, I actually get overwhelmed. And it's a lot. So I have to actually learn to consciously tune out of some things and be like, that's not my business, that's not my business. I'm gonna stay in my body, you know. Um, because what happens is, is there's, there begins to be this uh, ability to tune into the, the, the important streams of information. So that's when inspiration comes in. So you can tune into these certain threads of consciousness, which are important information for you to have, you know, because the imaginative realms are the creative realms, it can be quite chaotic. So if you were to just tune in to all the information in the atmosphere happening on a spiritual level, you would actually probably just become overwhelmed you yeah. know and that's a lot of people actually who say that they're empaths and they pick up too much information which is debatable but i think that's basically what they're pointing at is that they pick up more information than they can actually process yeah. so we need to learn how to have that discernment and be like okay this is a wave of information that i want to follow and then from there um then that leads to intuition so intuition is when we directly can can perceive the spiritual essence of things directly and know it so it's not like archetypal symbol. It's not like me reading tarot cards. It's just, we just know it. It's the direct knowing of something and that's the higher mind. And that again has to happen in certain stages. And I think a basic prerequisite for this is like the self-work to explore our unconscious, our unconscious biases, conditioning, understanding thought patterns, and having a good relationship with our mind is the prerequisite. Because if your mind is like, just insane, which is most of our minds, let's be honest, then how are you going to pick up the intuitive streams of information when your mind is just talking all the time? So I think it's really important we actually have some sort of stability and maturity in using the mind as a starting point. Yeah, exactly what I said. And that's, that's we go way deeper into all of that in our course, Embodied Soul Awakening, um, starting in November, again, the sixth installment. 
Um, to find out more about it, go to our, to my website, veilofreality.com, or you can apply to wakenapply.com. Um, but on that note, I want to really uh, shift now the topic of intuition, divine guidance to the times we're in right now and uh, on the practical level. Because what has happened, you know, I've done, done a lot of discovery calls if people are interested in, in the course, right? So we, we meet people on, on the Zoom. And I've talked with many, many people from literally all across the world, from Canada, US, uh, Australia, um, Europe, Bali, Costa Rica, South America, all across the world. And everybody's kind of like asking what to do right now, you know what I mean? And a lot of people I, I see are very desperate to move somewhere else, you know, especially people be it in Canada or even the US, uh, even Europe or Australia and whatnot, they want to find a different location, you know, and people ask, what should I do? You know, I, I know you guys moved and all of this. And this is here, like, it's about making decisions and decisions also ties into intuition or higher guidance. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. um, but what I've noticed as well, and a lot of people are in desperation and fear. So they, they feed this doom and gloom fear frequency, you know what I mean? So in my in my personal experience, it's not the best decision to make, uh, best time to make a decision out of desperation or in this fear out of body, kind of like just rea mechanically reacting externally. Mm -hmm. right? There needs to be practical um, considerations. We talked about this before. Even like, yes, Laura and I, we uh, moved, we escaped Los Angeles basically last year and moved here to Arizona. Uh and but it was in our case it was building up because we already did like LA for a while. We wanted to move, mm -hmm. you know. And then in that moment, I remember you really felt the, the need to get out. There was very much an ins instinctual. That was reaction, instinctual, right? yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely. And then, and then you tested though. Then we took our time. And what I've noticed also, what I also say, people like it's not too much like desperately getting out of one area and, and somewhere else, but also look forward to be somewhere. You know, we you know I've always liked Sedona here. I wanted to be here visited many times so we were looking forward to come here mm -hmm. what i see now is a lot of people even are, are interesting or maybe ironically with quite a few people applying um to our course who are already like in areas where other people would like to move to be it bali or costa rica or mexico but the grass is not necessarily green on the other side you know a lot of people dealing with other issues over there you know all of a sudden things are way more pricier than they thought it is and and resources yeah and and also the nostalgia of growing your own food you become your own farmer which is like it's a whole it's a other lot of work. a lot of work or moving into a country especially you know be it mexico costa in these kind of like south american country which are beautiful but if you don't speak the language you can easily be <laughs> screwed over right yeah um so it's also like what I'm saying that, you know, sometimes practical consideration need to be made. Yeah, absolutely. But this is a highly individual, individual situation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the question is, where's the decision coming from? What are you trying to run away from? What, what, what is the truth? And what is your own, also just your fearful projections? Because what's happening, I said this many, what's happening in the world, there's no way to escape to. This is going to happen globally. And the more you externalize and trying to r run away from something, the, w uh, the more it will manifest in the collective anyways or in your personal lives. Yeah. That is not to say sometimes, yes, I agree. Like we did, like many others, out of practical considerations, good to leave. But then we tie into a higher lesson, the soul lesson, the deeper purpose. May some of us are maybe to be here, you know, even like when... You know, like I said many times, I want to be in the U.S. right now going through this Pluto transit. That's what we're here for. That's where my soul decides to be, to be the warrior. You know, I'm not interested to escape somewhere to a beach uh, <laughs> and whatnot. Even my ego would like that. So that also comes down to where's the, uh, you know, decision coming from, from our ego personality or personalities. We're so many from our, tra it can be easily a trauma response to this day and age, wishful thinking and all of that, or a deeper soul calling. Mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. intuition it's all about making decisions right and people are afraid to make the wrong decision but there's no such thing as wrong decisions there's only lessons you know so this is very important to, to understand nowadays you know like um that's why i'm saying this inner work what we just share about is most crucial not just because you know because it connects you to who you truly are and you know your inner gu the guidance can only can only come from within the more you're externally focused the more you like leave in the wind right so this is this is very critical in this day and age. So yeah. we do the inner work so we can connect to our intuition. So on that note, do you mind, and then we can talk more about, do you mind reading the quote? It's an excellent by quote by Carolyn, Miss. by Carolyn Miss about intuition and making decisions. Yes. Okay. 
How we feel about ourselves, whether we respect ourselves, determines the quality of our life, our capacity to succeed in work, relationships, healing, and intuitive skills. Self-understanding and acceptance, the bond we form with ourselves, is in many ways the most crucial spiritual challenge we face. In truth, if we don't like ourselves, we will be incapable of making healthy decisions. Instead, we will direct all of our personal power for decision making into the hands of someone else, someone we want to impress or someone before whom we think we must weaken ourselves to gain physical security. People who have low self-esteem attract relationships and occupational situations that reflect and reinforce this weakness. The stronger our spirits become, the less authority linear time can exercise in our lives. Intuition is never the ability to engage prophecy nor a means of avoiding financial loss or painful relationships. It is actually the ability to use energy data and to make decisions in the immediate moment. Energy data are the emotional, psychological, and spiritual components of a given situation. They are the here and now ingredients of life, not non-physical information from some future place. But intuitive guidance does not mean following a voice to the promised lands. It means having the self-esteem that the discomfort and confusion that a person feels is actually directing him to take charge of his life and make choices that will break him out of the stagnation of misery. If a person suffers from low self-esteem, she cannot act on her intuitive impulses because her fear of failure is too intense. Intuition, like all meditative disciplines, can be enormously effective if and only if one has the courage and personal power to follow through on the guidance it provides. Guidance requires action, but it does not guarantee safety. While you measure our own success in terms of our own personal comfort and security, the universe measures our success by how much we have learned. So long as we use comfort and security as our criteria for success, we will f- we will fear our own intuitive guidance because by its very nature, it directs us into new cycles of learning that are sometimes uncomfortable. In developing your skill of intuition in your own life, you must trust your gut responses, a fact I cannot emphasize enough. And interestingly, I agree with everything she said, except for the fact that the gut responses are more related to the instinctual body than the intuitive intuitive body. But she's right about everything else. And that's the main thing is that intuition is not just guiding you into things that will feel good either. In fact, your intuition, if you're correctly following it, will guide you into parts and places and experiences that will show you more of who you really are. That's the point. And that is not the easiest process. Like if I have an intuition to contact a certain therapist, for example, and if I'm not willing to stay with the pain and suffering that that therapist may mirror back to me or what I'm missing or the realizations I have, then I won't be able to get the gold from that experience. So I think it's really important that intuition can sometimes lead us into a lesson that we need to learn. And and again, sorry, one more thing to add on to that. And again, and this is something we talk about a lot in the course, is the, the soul, your soul capacity and your ability to connect to at least your own emotions and your own body needs to be strong enough that you can hold the ego as it loses its shit so to speak, throughout the experience. I'm not swearing because someone complained about us swearing before. (laughs) But but, but that's what I mean is like the ego will tend to put up a temper tantrum when we go through these soul-guided experiences. The ego loses its shit, even if it's the best thing in the world for us. So it's about developing that soul capacity to both have intuition and to both hold your own parts of yourself as a struggle to integrate the experience. Yeah. And I want to like, again, bring it back to also like the times when what I just shared about people looking to move other locations and where to go and trusting guidance. And it's very important to understand from this higher perspective here, as she says, that intuitive, intuitive guidance does not mean following a voice to the promised land. Nor does it, you know, prevent any hardship or anything. Guidance also requires action, obviously, and it doesn't also um, provide necessarily comfort and security. That's the ego person is attached to, right? Obviously, we're still needing to deal with common sense and prepare on the basic physical level. But as long as people externalize oriented, which I see a lot happening, they want to just get away from it all, move somewhere where they're safe. 
And I've seen this, especially now, with so many people actually having gone to these places we call like paradise somewhere, you know, uh, in South America or Bali and whatnot, and things are not as rosy as they are at all over mm-hmm. there, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of shit comes up they, they didn't expect to come up, you know, new challenges and all of that because it was a decision made out of desperation and 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 wanting to escape to somewhere else where things are just better but yeah. they, but right what's happening i can just overemphasize this but as the saying goes <laughs> you can lead a horse to water but you cannot make them drink you know that's why this inner work is so key right now the braid work we are on the collective meltdown the collective shadows coming out as we shared in our last uh, podcast and and as long as we uh, avoid the individuation process and do the inner work we just experience it constantly as fate externally as as we're caught in in the in the in the time time loop so to speak in the frequency prison which these will call forces take advantage of because they kind of keep us externalized and again it's not black and white sometimes physical preparation if your intuitive guidance or whatever uh, or god tells you to move somewhere or go somewhere you know go follow it right but also where, check yourself where it's truly coming from and align it also like with just basic practicality, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's what it comes down In to. In this case, actually, when it comes to like moving and moving your whole life to a different place, yes, follow your intuition, but get the regular, logical, rational, organizing mind involved. And because- is it to intuition, uh, like we just talked, I'm sorry to interrupt that we talked about this the first ha- half hour. Mm-hmm. Is it intuition to begin with? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think um, personally, we may have different views about this, but my feeling about this is, is that what what actually what actually drove me to say hey it's time for us to start looking for houses in other places was more instinct i just did not feel safe in a city where these crazy riots were going on because that was the point when we were like okay we got to get out of here you know so i think there is also it's it is really important to just recover the instincts before you even go into the intuitive realms meaning get back into your body, understand the language of your nervous system, understand when you're in fear, when you're disassociated, when you're just activated, when you're calm. This subtle language of the body is like the first step to entering your own human experience is where intuition can arise. So I think for many people, it is really easy especially in our culture, to disassociate, to get it, to, to literally live in fear and stress our whole life or, or, or a state of disassociation. Yeah. So if you want to make a decision, the first thing to do is to get back into relationship with your own body, understand when you are in a, you know, uh, disassociated or extreme fear state, understand when you are activated and then understand how that affects your decision making. Because a lot of people from what you, sh- when you're sharing the people in this, uh, that we've been talking to and we see it everywhere is like they're acting out of fear and it doesn't mean that you can just eliminate fear and it's not going to be present, but just at least be able to gain some distance and be like, wow, I'm really afraid. Okay. But what is really going on? You know, is it, is there immediate danger? Is there, you know, just walk yourself through it on a practical perspective. Like you have to kind of reality test these situations and honestly, in times like, so you're going to say, that reminds me just real quick. We went to, sorry. I'm laughing, but it reminded me, remember we went to uh, uh, the Grand Canyon mm-hmm. and I were hanging out there and there was this long hike, like a day long hike in like a few days into the canyon with camping. And there was a warning sign at the uh, uh, right before the entrance of the hike down into the canyon. It says, do you have a realistic plan? <laughs> because again, see people get yeah, stuck in Yeah, they get stuck right? in there. Like, they get stuck in like their inspiration yeah. and like, wow, I really want to go into the Grand Canyon. Exactly. So... This reality factor, it, you don't want to overdo it to the point where you're like, oh, intuition is not real and doesn't exist and I can't pick up anything outside of my five senses. You don't want to like overdo the reality factor, but you still want to be able to look at your life clearly. Like if I were in a place right now where restaurants were starting to close down or not close down, but it was starting to ask for the Vax passport because I'm not willing to get it. I would just logically see that my quality of life is about to get hit down an auction if I can't go into any restaurants. And not only that, that's a sign that it could get worse. So, you know, there's a lot of practical ways. Like I wouldn't even suggest, generally speaking, people who want to move, listen to their intuition. I would think they should more listen to just reality because intuition can lead you into all sorts of places. And if you're stuck in a state of fear, panic, you know, not, no, well, not that's say- a bad thing. 
but I would say that the intuition is is probably the least of your worries. Yeah, but then I think it's 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 even harder than in these 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 times to for reasons we mentioned before to truly tune into true intuition. I would definitely recommend if you can identify intuition. But intuition is also there's a deeper guidance. But the key point it doesn't deep intuition also connects you to your soul purpose to your soul lessons. Yes, which may in not may but will interfere what your ego actually wants. Yes, so that's what people uh, misconstrue or confuse. Actually, a lot of people make decisions based on what their ego personality wants as opposed to what actually the soul truly needs want and experience yes. so to speak right hence what works for one may not work for another that's why i'm very critical of people just saying like everybody get out of australia out of canada and everybody move here and there i would never tell anybody what they should do who am i to know what their deeper soul lessons are on a po on all levels where they need to be mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. that's that's uh, as i'm still like figuring out my own way and in in deeper intuition and soul guidance yeah right? That being said, it is completely normal when you have a totalitarian government clamping down for people to relocate. It Absolutely. happens. It happens Happen across history. <laughs> yeah, the reason, like we we don't understand these big events happen. They dis they they kind of separate people across the globe. Basically, like yeah. my family, for example, after World War II, they went to internment camps in BC, and then they got pushed away to Ontario. So there's a mass amount of displacement happening, which is actually real. But you know, you still have to engage the practical considerations is like, can you afford to? What would it be like to live there? What are the resources? Like all of these are things to, to consider the practical considerations. Yeah, it's a kind of like a fine balance between like sometimes taking the leap of faith and let the nether appear where the saying goes, but mm -hmm. also some practical consideration and practical planning. Yeah, because right? I have to say, even though intuitively, you know, when, when you said Sedona, I was like, oh, that sounds like a good idea, you know, we went and we visited a and I felt it yeah. out and I, and, and, so I had an intuition we had to get out of there. I didn't know where, you know, but I was also able to reality test my choice and be like, okay, does it have the things that I like in a town, you know, and it did. And, it, and I felt good there. So, you know, it's really important to, to not be so attached to your intuitive messages that you're not willing to see evidence that actually proves to be contrary, I think. Right. And that's when I think we can get into tricky, ter tricky territory, which we can talk about in the second hour. Yeah. Because when we're, when we have intuitive feelings and reality is not matching up to it, it actually proves that it's not intuition. Exactly. Which then that's because we're at the end of the first hour and then we di dive deep into that in the second hour, because that ties into the topic of synchronicities and divine guidance. Yeah. Because there's certain signs, divine guidance, uh, unseen help, you know, and also differentiating between true synchronicities from the divine or false synchronicities, right? We have uh, artificial synchronicities in, infused by occult forces, temptations, distractions that appeal more to the lower nature, to the ego personality and all of that. So we will talk about that as well and how to differentiate it again in the second hour. If you are not a member already, um, and um, but would like to listen to our, the second hour of our podcast and also support our work, please um, sign up as a member. Go to my website, veilofreality.com, V-E-I-L, reality.com, offreality.com, and uh, sign up to the membership. It'll give you access to all the uh, second hours of the podcast and the membership forum. And if you're interested to go on an adventure with us for 12 weeks in our online coaching program, group coaching program, Time of Transition Embodied Soul Awakening. Um, it starts November 22nd for 12 weeks until February 10th. It's by application only and limited um, space available. Then also go to my website under courses. You can find more information there and apply there. Or you can apply straight at awakenapply.com. And with that being said, see you all in the second hour. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>